Hey y'all, this is Trudy. Uh, I just thought I'd give you a little tour of what it's like in Superior and Duluth area. I put together some photos and I will uh, talk you through it. Here we go. This is Belknap in Superior. It used to be a very busy street at the time. Uh, this big building here still stands as an apartment building. Those little houses that you can see close to it, those were made by the shipping industry. And what they did is they went to large cities and they asked people if they wanted a house in return for doing work with the shipping yards. I'm not sure how many years they had to work before they could get the deed to the house, but there are many of those throughout Superior, so I'm sure they got a lot of pick pickers. Across the bridge there, that is the Blotnet Bridge, that is Superior, closest to you here, that is uh, Duluth, that's their train yard. And this is our labor industry, which is where our trucks do their business and the shippers, uh, shipping industry does their work. You can see a grain elevator way off in the distance there. This is Tower Avenue, as it once looked a long time ago. The Android Hotel with the flag there on the left still stands, along with the post office there on the right with the flag. Many of the other business buildings do not exist. This is Tower Avenue as it exists today. On the left hand side there you will see the old post office which is only used for small businesses. And on the right is the New York building. Down there you can see at the very end the Android Hotel which is still a hotel today. We have UWS Superior, Basic College, the little white building in the front, then the old milk house, which is one of the oldest gas stations slash convenience stores in Superior. It was pushed off to the side as a historical mar marker. Uh, it's no longer used. Blocknick, uh, Barker's Island, sorry is off there to the side. It's got a boat that's been dry docked that you can go through. There's also a boat that uh, dredges the lake that people can look at. A couple little shops down there and there's also a hotel down that way. The building with the glass mirrors on it used to be a school. Of course they didn't have the mirrors on it then. It was converted into a building for businesses. We also gained that new restaurant when that happened. I haven't been there yet. Our biggest attraction in Superior is the Fairlawn Museum, which was built by a ship captain. The bottom part and one of the rooms upstairs is how the house existed back in that time. The rest of the building is made into a museum of odd and end collectibles that people have donated to the Fairlawn over the years. It's often used for tea parties. If you cross the Blunt and it breaks, you come into Duluth. Superior is over there on the other side. Duluth has many different businesses. Uh, Duluth is made up of uh, East End, West End. There's also on top of the hill, which everybody says, which has got our Walmart and the bigger mall. Um, downtown Superior harbors many little shops that end up staying for a while, though with gas prices the way they are, it has been a little harder to keep businesses going. This is Duluth at night. People like to come and take pictures of all the pretty lights. This is the lift bridge. Uh, I'm not sure when it was built, but it uh, lifts to let boats underneath it. People like to take many pictures of it. There's a walk on the side, so you can walk all the way out to the lighthouse. People like to stand under the bridge when it's lifting. It's kind of a awe-fying moment. Now in this next picture, it's lifting just a little bit to let one of the cruise ships through. The cruise ships take you around to the big boats into the grain elevators and show you how the whole shipping industry kind of works. The bad thing about living near the bridge there is that bridge makes a lot of noise. And on the other side of the bridge is Park Point. The only way to get from Park Point to Duluth is to go over that bridge. And so if the boats are up, or the bridge is up, you can't get over. Bad thing to happen if you're in a hurry. This is one of the big boats that do go under there quite frequently. And in this next photo, it's next to one of the grain elevators that people like to look at. 
They also have the depot, which is a train museum for the most part. It also harbors a bunch of uh, odd and end collectibles and arts uh, at different times. They also have ballets and whatnot there. I personally like going to where the train museum is. It is a working depot. It does have a working train that comes through at different times. I like the downstairs because it looks as the depot did back in its time with the little shops and whatever. Here's one of the trains that you can see there. There are many trains there. A lot of them you can climb aboard and you can ring the whistles. They also have the passenger cars that you can look at. There's a caboose you can look at. One of my more favorite parts of Duluth, though, is the Congdon Mansion, also known as Glensheen. The Condons are responsible for a lot of the progress that was made in the Duluth Superior area. They, I do believe, were in the shipping industry, and they did a lot to um, just enhance. The Condons were very advanced. They had an indoor pool. They had heating, which was unusual for its time. The building is existent as it was back when the Condons lived there. One of the other more famous parts of the museum is the fact that Mrs. Condon, one of their daughters, died here. She was murdered, and there was this big investigation. It turned out that it was the butler who did do it, though there are speculations that her adoptive daughter had a lot to do with her demise. Well, that ends my tour. Please pick up your cups and popcorn and throw them in the rightful containers. And I hope you enjoyed your tour. And I will talk to you again some other day. Thank you.